Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We're going to be giving you a big breakdown, basically a rundown of every single game mentioned in today's Nintendo Direct. So there is that. We're actually going to spend a huge chunk of this video, however, talking about new details and some of my thoughts on The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. But don't worry, we'll start off with the newsiest portion, breaking down the Direct, and then we'll get into the new information, and then we'll get to my thoughts. Let's go. Let's get into the news and speculation. So just breaking down today's Nintendo Direct, obviously we can just start off with some of the big guns here. We have the sequel to The Legend of Zelda. It is called Tears of the Kingdom. It's coming out on May 12, 2023. They showed that off today. They also showed off Pikmin 4 and that it will arrive at some point in 2023. They also showed off Fire Emblem Engage, which is a brand new mainline Fire Emblem game. It does happen to have Marth in it, and it is set to come out January 20th of 2023. Next up we have Kirby's Return to Dream Land Deluxe brings a Wii Classic to Switch, so that is an old game coming back yet again. That is coming out on February 24th, 2023. Octopath Travelers 2 was announced. That game is set to launch on February 24th, 2023, and it's also launching on all other platforms as well, so it is not an exclusive game. Bayonetta 3 got a new trailer, plus a new extended trailer for those that want to check out that as well. Remember, that's coming out next month. Final Fantasy Theat Rhythm Final Bar Line is uh, announced and coming out next year on February 16th, 2023. Now, this was kind of one we're going to separate out. There was some NSO announcements, but first off, GoldenEye was announced for uh, Nintendo Switch Online and is the only version of the game because it's also coming to Xbox, but it is the only version that's going to have online multiplayer. I don't know why that's the case, but that that is. They also announced that a bunch of Mario parties, Pokemon Stadium, etc. will be heading to NSO. So the exact games are GoldenEye, Pilot Wings, Mario Party, Mario Party 2, Mario Party 3, Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Stadium Dude, 1080 Snowboarding, and Excite Bite uh, will all be releasing some in 2022 and some in 2023. Also, Harvest Moon 64 is exclusive in Japan. Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion will be released on December 13, 2022. That was announced today. Wave 3 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course had a little bit shown off today with Mary Mountain from Mario Kart Tour and Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS, and it said it will come out this holiday. Nintendo Switch Sports is getting its free edition of the Golf Mode, but it has been delayed from this fall to this holiday. Mario Strikers Battle League is going to get its second free update as well, which includes Pauline Diddy Kong, new gear, new rankings, and also a new stadium. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Wave 2 of DLC is going to be added in as well. There was some stuff showing off today. Splatoon 3's first Splatfest was announced today as well, and it's going to be between gear, grub, or fun, depending on what you would like to have on a private island. You're stuck on an island. What would you rather do? Resident Evil Village Cloud. This includes Village. This includes also Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, the remakes and all that. Those will be available through Cloud uh, later this year. Harvest Moon, A Wonderful Life is actually getting remade as Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. So there is that. Fay Farm is a new RPG with a mix of magic and farming. Again, we got a lot of farming RPGs today. Comes out at some point next year to Switch exclusive. Harvestella actually had a demo drop today, and its release date uh, unveiled again of November 4th. Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is coming west. This did actually release originally in Japan, I believe, back in 2008, but it never got localized. It has now obviously been remastered and coming to the west. Tunic was talked about again, and you can actually pre-order the game right now. It releases later this month on Switch, September 27th. It Takes Two was announced for Switch as well. That's coming November 4th this year. Sifu was mentioned again. It is coming out on November 8th. Front Mission 1 Remake, Front Mission 2 Remake are announced, and we get looks at them. Plus, they announced that Front Mission 3 will also be ported as well. All of these will come sometime in 2023. Altia Ryza 3, Alchemist of the End and the Secret Key is coming in early 2023 on February 24th. You notice that February 24th date seems to be a popular release date. Tales of Symphonia Remastered is coming as well next year in early 2023, although there is no date. Then we have Master Detective Archives Rain Code was announced. We also got SpongeBob SquarePants The Cosmic Shake was also announced as a 2023 game and we'll have the original Original voice actors. Rune Factory 3 is getting remade and released in, in 2023, but they also announced there'll be a brand new Rune Factory game coming at some point as well, although they didn't show it off. 
Various Day Life was shown off as well, which is a new RPG. Radiant Silver Gun uh, arrives later today. That was a shadow drop today. Factorio uh, was announced and will task you with building a new rocket to get home by utilizing the world's resources. That's coming out October 28th, 2022, the same day as Bayonetta 3. IB, or IB, is uh, some sort of creepy adventure game that was announced today, and that's all, all that happened. Oddballers was a party game announced today. That's coming to Switch in 2023. Fitness Boxing, Fist of the North Star, is a workout game coming out in March of 2023. Just Dance 2023 edition was shown off, even though it was announced this past weekend. It's coming November 22nd. Endless Dungeon is a procedurally generated roguelite set in space. That is coming out in 2023 as well. And there were a bevy of other smaller titles that we're not going to get into because it's kind of irrelevant to today's conversation. What I do want to focus on, of course, is Tears of the Kingdom, because, oh boy, was that ever epic. Now, before I talk more about it, let's get into the new information we have on it. And that's essentially, we got new art, official screenshots, and the box art. Now, the box art looks absolutely incredible, and it's based on the official art that dropped, which I really, really like, and is instantly becoming the background on pretty much all of my devices uh, by the end of today. And what I find interesting about the screenshots is all of them are screenshots released by Nintendo that definitely came from the trailer, but everything looks so crisp. It looks so clean compared to watching the video version. So it makes me feel like maybe the game's running in 1080p or 900p or some sort of higher than 720p resolution. But again, these are obviously just bull shots and, and they don't really mean a whole lot until the game's in our hands. Also, strangely enough, when talking about Tears of the Kingdom today, isn't just the speculation around the name and how it was supposed to be a spoiler. I also think it's interesting if we just sit back and think for a moment, you know, why is Nintendo not showing more of this game. We continue to just be shown really tiny snippets. We've been shown tiny snippets now four times. We don't actually get any extended gameplay, extended looks, and I know we're gonna get plenty of it. Some have wondered if this is because it's actually going to be on new hardware, or it's gonna launch with new hardware, so Nintendo's waiting to blow it out when, they, when that new hardware is gonna be revealed which would be probably next year, right? If there is going to be new hardware. Again, that's still total speculation. Nobody knows. But at this point, everything surrounding Tears of the Kingdom is speculation besides the fact that there are islands in the sky. You can dive off them. And yeah, Zelda's in the game somewhere. <laughs> I think what's interesting, though, in just looking at the trailer over and over again, is you can clearly see that there might be some sort of story elements being suggested here. One of them looking like possibly that Ganondorf purposely sacrificed himself maybe to lift a certain curse over demise. I don't know. That's obviously just a theory. Beyond that, we have to see that Zelda and this weird godlike creature uh, put their hands in a circle, and we have the, the dragon, you know, eating itself thing happening, uh, or it's two dragons, two-headed dragon. I, I, I have no idea because it's different. Like, uh, in the game, it kind of shows the two dragons coming up and meeting each other in, the, in there, but then you go to some of the other logos, and it's more of a circle with the dragons eating each other's tails. Look, it looks different depending on what's going on. Maybe that's because it's a symbol for abilities or something in the game. We don't know. It's all speculation at this point, but I'm just really excited for Tears of the Kingdom, and I think that this has the potential to not only be next year's Game of the Year, I'm shocked it's coming in May. Is anyone else surprised? Like, look, I know I expected March. I'm cool with May. It's still spring. I just, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised. Nintendo usually doesn't have a huge game in May, so I'll take it. Breath of the Wild 2, a.k.a. I shouldn't say a.k.a. Breath of the Wild 2 is the a.k.a. The game has a name. It is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. We need to all get used to saying that and forget Breath of the Wild 2. Forget the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. No, no, no. Breath of the Wild, goodbye. You're ancient history now. Now we're looking at Tears of the Kingdom. Looks incredible. I will dive into deeper speculation on this in the Nintendo Prime podcast tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central. Otherwise, folks, you guys are amazing and epic and awesome, and I love everyone, and... It was, an, it was a Nintendo Direct day, so no matter what was shown today, it's always a good day when we get to hear official news from the big end. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's Prime 5.